Good morning. My name is Seiji Nakata, President and CEO of Daiwa Securities Group. Thank you very much for joining us today amidst your busy schedule. For the past two years, the management strategy briefing was held online, but this time we decided to hold a hybrid face to face and online session. So we would now like to begin. First, let us review the market environment of last year. As many of you are aware, the Nikkei stock average rose to 30,670 yen in September, the highest level in 31 years. However, the market subsequently entered a period of significant adjustment due to a series of adverse factors, including the resurgence of the COVID 19 infection, rising global interest rates, and the, the worsening situation in Russia and Ukraine. And this market correction is still ongoing. On the other hand, the interest rate and foreign exchange markets started to move since the end of 2021 or the beginning of 2022. And with the Ukraine situation, the market continues to be volatile. In this environment, our business performance was off to a good start in the first year of the, the medium-term management plan with Group Consolidated Ordinary Income of 135.8 billion yen as reported. There may be different ways of evaluating our performance, but all in all, we were able to make a positive start. But in particular, Ordinary Income in the Retail Division totaled 41.8 billion yen, achieving the final year target of 40 billion yen in the first year of the medium-term management plan. The transformation to a wealth management type business model and cost structure reforms that we have been carefully promoting for the past five years are steadily bearing fruit. The wholesale division posted 50.9 billion yen. Profit decreased compared to the previous fiscal year, that is two years ago when there was a strong follow-on win in the fixed income business. The Asset Management Division recorded the highest ever ordinary income of 45.2 billion yen, while the Investment Division posted ordinary income of 7.1 billion yen. In addition, ordinary income from hybrid-related businesses, which is our group's major focus, expanded to 32 billion yen, or 23% of consolidated ordinary income. Daiwa's performance was well-balanced and not dependent on any particular division. And through diversification of our business portfolio, we were able to demonstrate a profit structure and stability that is less susceptible to the market environment. This slide shows the progress on improvement in revenues. We have already achieved 24 billion yen in cost reduction by FI 2021, which includes the previous medium-term management plan period, and we will continue to reduce costs by additional 6 billion yen by FI 2023. The total reduction in the last fiscal year was approximately 5 billion yen for the group as a whole. This reduction in the retail division was approximately 3 billion yen, mainly due to the establishment of branch offices into upper floor buildings and the consolidation of middle and back office functions. On the other hand, we are aggressively investing in IT to improve customer convenience and business efficiency, and IT expenses are on a gradual upward trend. We believe it is necessary to continue reducing costs. At the beginning of this year, we solicited cost-cutting ideas from our employees and received more than 1,500 submissions. The details are currently under scrutiny, but we will continue to make company-wide bold efforts to further reduce costs. As shown on the right, we plan to strategically shift a total of about 1,100 middle and back office personnel, a shift that has been enabled by digitalization. By April of this year, approximately 1,000 personnel, or more than 90% of the process, has been completed. Shifting personnel not only contributes to top-line growth, but also reduces costs by curtailing the use of temporary workers and new outside hires. Please look at page 7. 
Some of you may be wondering if we will change our ordinary income target of 200 billion yen for FY 2023 due to the current deterioration of the external environment. Certainly, it is a challenging goal, and we are visiting our assessment of the external environment. However, we have a diversified business portfolio, and the impact of market changes on our business by division is both positive and negative. So, we do not expect the total impact to be large enough to cause us to revise our targets. The table on the right shows the momentum of each division toward achieving the goals set at the time the medium term plan was formulated. For example, the retail division is indicated as double circle, which means that we are expecting to exceed the ordinary income target of 40 billion yen for FY 2023. This is because we expect flow revenues to recover more than initially expected, along with a steady increase in asset based revenues, backed by an increase in fund wrap balances. On the other hand, global markets is shown as triangle, indicating that it will be challenging to achieve ordinary income of 69 billion yen. This is because we expect equity income to be lower than initially expected. However, we expect that the increase in interest rate and foreign exchange earnings will be able to offset some of the decline in equity earnings. While momentum and real estate asset management and the investment division is exceeding initial targets, Daiwa Energy Infrastructure is currently having some challenges achieving its goals as it is impacted by COVID 19 and the amount of capital gains. Please turn to page 9. From here, we will introduce progress in each business line in future initiatives. First, the retail division. Recently, we hear that our competitors are considering to move to an asset management type or wealth management type business. However, as we have said in the past, a shift to a wealth management business model is not something that can be accomplished in a short period of time. The actual transition of the business model requires an organic linkage of corporate culture, human resource systems, and training systems, products and services, and development of support tools, which is a very time consuming and challenging initiative. Above all, wealth management business cannot be realized without the mindset of sales personnel who are committed to pursuing the best interests of customers. In April 2017, when I became president, we abolished sales targets for each tar- product, introduced a bottom up sales structure, and shifted to a sales strategy based on customer satisfaction, known as NPS, Net Promotion s Goal. In 2019, we abolished the revenue target itself and made product proposals in line with customer needs, the main pillar of the sales personnel evaluation. By executing this long term strategy without wavering and without hesitation in any environment, our sales structure is steadily undergoing a process of transformation, and I am very confident of the progress so far. If we can take the lead in establishing a wealth management business model, we believe that we can expand our customer base externally by providing our know how, products, services, and systems to external partners as a platform provider. Please turn to page 10. I will now explain our competitive advantage in three major themes. The first is expanding customer assets and transactions through a total asset approach. The second is expanding stock related AUM, such as fund wraps and asset based fee plan for investment trusts. Third, expanding customer contacts with,、uh, through thorough external connections. By accelerating efforts to address these themes, we aim to achieve ordinary income of 40 billion yen and asset based revenue of 92 billion yen in the retail division in FY 2023. In Q4 of FY 2023, we aim to achieve an asset based revenue ratio of 50% and a fixed cost coverage ratio of 100% for asset based revenues in the retail division. 
First, let us look at the status of Daiwa version of MPS, which we have placed at the center of our sales reforms. The top left figure shows the NPS score on the horizontal axis, the total products purchased on the vertical axis, and the bubble shows the amount of ordinary income. NPS is a measure of the degree to which people are willing to recommend a product or service to their family and friends. We can confirm the trend that an increase in NPS leads to an increase in transactions with customers and ultimately an increase in profits. An analysis has shown that 10% shift of customers from critics to passives or from passives to promoters, the cumulative effect over a three-year period will be an increase in revenue of between 9 billion yen and 23 billion yen. We therefore continue to focus on NPS during the current medium-term management plan. The steady progress in customer-oriented business operations with a focus on improving customer satisfaction is also reflected in our figures. As shown on the right, Daiwa Securities clients have lengthened their holding periods of equity investment trusts to 3.7 years, and the frequency of trading, calculated from the balance of foreign equity and the amount of transactions, has dropped significantly to 0.6 times per year. In addition, the percentage of newly introduced customers through referrals from existing customers has risen to 51%. Daiwa Group promotes a total asset approach that provides solutions for real estate and family stock, which account for approximately half of the assets of high net worth customers. Our asset consultants and inheritance consultants listen to the business succession, real estate, and inheritance needs of our clients. And by utilizing the resources of our external partners, we aim to provide advanced solutions that competitors cannot emulate. The use of investment planning tools is a powerful weapon to provide our clients with the best possible portfolio. The visualization of investment efficiency of total financial assets, including those held by other companies, is highly convincing and has been highly evaluated by our customers as a service that no other competitor offers. We believe that the shift to a wealth management business model will be accelerated as portfolio management becomes more prevalent among customers as a result of continuous asset management planning. In the 18 months since its introduction in August 2020 through the end of March 2022, we have analyzed a total of more than 18 trillion yen in assets, including 8.2 trillion yen in assets held by other companies. We also secured 450 billion yen of net asset inflows from other companies. As of end of December 2021, Japan's personal financial assets totaled 2,023 trillion yen, more than half of which, or 1,092 trillion yen, was in cash and deposits. Individuals' core assets are mainly conservative or defensive investments, most of which are cash deposits with near zero interest rates. In the future, a major shift of funds from savings to asset building is expected in Japan due to gradual inflation and the growing need to protect asset values in response to the 100-year lifespan. However, we believe that the shift of funds will be focused on products that are relatively close to conservative investments, are appropriate for the client's risk tolerance and goals, and can achieve portfolio construction. Therefore, we believe that fund wraps are the best product for many of our customers. Looking at the portfolios selected by existing Daiwa fund wrap customers, about half of the portfolios are in the conservative category, which has the lowest risk level amongst the five levels of risk. We believe that there is still a huge need for customers that do not wish to take too much risk, but prefers better returns than deposits. We believe that even 10% of the 1,000 trillion yen that is currently sitting in deposits, or 100 trillion yen, could serve as a receptacle for those customers' funds. We believe that the reason of our fund wrap business has been able to maintain stable contract and net growth over the long term is, above all, because of the support of our customers. 
the ability to put together a customized, optimized portfolio for each customer and rebalance them according to the market, as well as the thorough after-sales service, are all the factors that contribute to a great sense of security. In addition, they are effective supportive services for inheritance planning, such as designated inheritance beneficiary service, annual gifting services, and others. Above all, we are also delivering excellent performance. These multiple factors combined have resulted in high customer satisfaction, and as a result, the average holding period is approximately eight years. In addition, the number of accounts has reached a record high, and as of the end of March, new purchases accounted for 37% of the total contract amount, thanks to the provision of highly satisfactory services and ongoing improvements in product quality. The balance per contract has also expanded to approximately 20 million yen, approximately double the industry average. While the balance of fund wrap accounts in Japan has been increasing steadily, if we look at the U.S., the balance of fund wrap accounts is 1,230 trillion yen and 9.1% of personal financial assets, which are 90 times and 13 times larger, respectively, than in Japan. We therefore have reasons to believe that Japan's fund wrap accounts still have the potential to expand. Looking at the performance of Daiwa Fund Wrap, all three investment styles, conservative, balanced, and aggressive, have shown stable and favorable performance over the medium to long term. However, the conservative management style has stronger resistance to lower prices during market correction phases, as you can see. Next slide, please. The company's proprietary service, Asset-Based Fee Plan for Investment Trust, introduced in October 2020, continues to see inflows of funds, and the balance is steadily increasing. The ability to flexibly buy and sell without paying additional fees, even in times of sudden market changes, has attracted new and existing investors alike. This trend continues with 52% of purchases made by experienced investors, such as management and cor corporations, and 51% by users who purchase investment trusts for the first time at Daiwa Securities. We will continue to expand our balance by horizontally expanding our customer base. Please turn to page 17. Through a shift to wealth management business model, we aim to increase asset-based revenues, which is linked to the balance of mutual funds, fund wrap account services, foreign currency deposits, and others. We aim to increase the ratio of asset-based revenue from the current 41% to 50% by the fourth quarter of FI 2023, the final year of the medium-term management plan. The target is, as a prerequisite, to increase the balance of fund wrap account services to 3.8 trillion yen, asset-based fee plan for investment trusts to 1 trillion yen, and foreign currency deposits to 620 billion yen by the end of FI 2023. These balance targets have been revised in light of current sales conditions and future market assumptions. The fund wrap balance assumption has been revised upward, while the balance assumptions for asset-based fee plan for investment trusts and foreign currency deposits have been lowered. If each of the balance assumption is achieved as of the fourth quarter of FI 2023, we estimate that asset-based revenues will be able to cover 100% of the fixed costs of the retail division. Please turn to page 18. Next is a strategy of external alliances and open architecture. We believe that by collaborating with external companies that have a strong customer base and unique knowledge and expertise, we can generate revenues and share those revenues with them. This strategy is in line with the current trend. As for the alliance with the Japan Post Group, although it took some time, fund wrap sales at Japan Post Bank began on May the 9th. In the area of support for financial product brokerage business with Shinking Group, Daiwa Securities has been supporting several Shinking banks in their entry into the face-to-face -face financial product brokerage business. On May 23rd, Tama Shinkin Bank will begin handling the Shinkin Fund Wrap, which has been developed by Daiwa Securities in cooperation with Shinkin Central Bank. 
We will continue to actively pursue alliances with companies that have a strong customer base. Please turn to page 19. Japan Post Fund Wrap has an easy to understand product design and a consulting approach that proposes optimal portfolios according to different life stages, and it is also competitive in terms of fees. Sales are conducted by Japan Post Bank sales staff at the bank's 233 directly managed locations nationwide. Although we are aware that no specific sales target has been set by the bank, we believe that Japan Post Fund Wrap can be expected to sell at a reasonable scale, given Japan Post Bank's strong customer base and the fact that the discretionary investment service is positioned as one of the core products of their face-to-face -face channel. We understand that Japan Post Bank has always emphasized the need for goal-based sales or consulting sales in its financial results briefings, and that it intends to promote fund wrap as an important solution. We established a dedicated support division in October last year, with 40 employees at seven locations nationwide, including Tokyo, Osaka, and Nagoya, to assist Japan Post Bank sales staff. We have also established a contact center to respond to customer inquiries to provide a full-fledged support. We expect the fund wrap balance to exceed 1 trillion yen within a few years and to steadily expand the balance thereafter to become a new earnings pillars for Daiwa. Please turn to page 20. This slide explains the global markets within wholesale division. We expect that the drivers of future revenue growth will be foreign equity and FICC business. With regard to foreign equities, we are strengthening our support system, especially in the retail division, to expand the balance. The share of foreign currency-denominated assets among personal financial assets in Japan has been steadily increasing, but as of the end of December last year, it was still only 3.1%, leaving room for expansion of international diversified investment. Although the stock market is unstable at the moment, looking ahead, the U.S. is leading the way in terms of the speed of economic recovery and its ability to respond to changes in international affairs. And we expect U.S. stocks, especially high-tech and growth stocks, to come back to life again. On the other hand, as for FICC, we have a large share of the medium to short-term bond market in the U.S. as the primary dealer of treasuries. And the market environment of increasing interest rate volatility has been a follow wind for us. In such environment, we expect to increase revenues by expanding client flows in the U.S. Treasury and repo and by expanding bid-offer spread. In addition, we expect to see increased client flows for MBS, where spreads to treasuries have widened because of rising interest rates and the Fed's reduced asset purchases. In Japan, derivatives for corporate clients, which is our focus area, is a business with a large growth potential. In fact, the number of our customers has expanded fourfold over the past five years. We will continue to develop new corporate customers and expand transactions by enhancing the sophistication of our solution proposals based on client needs. Please turn to page 21. Next is global investment banking. As a result of winning many symbolic deals, including the largest PO deal of last fiscal year, serving as a joint global coordinator for Japan Post Group, we were awarded first place in the PO league table for the first time in four years. The top line for M&A has been steadily increasing, and in FI 2021, especially overseas M&A revenues was the driver, reaching a record high of 35.2 billion yen. For the first half of this fiscal year, we expect the, the business environment for POs and IPOs to be challenging, as there has been no significant improvement in investor sentiment, making it difficult to raise large-scale financing. However, we have not changed our view that corporate financing needs will continue to exist and business will expand over the medium to long term. 
We believe that the PO and IPO markets will recover as the market subsides and investors' risk tolerance increases. We have a substantial pipeline for the second half of FI 2022 and beyond, and we intend to expand our revenues by converting these pipeline items into deals. In addition, the M&A needs of companies are increasing, and we are receiving more consultations of business portfolio and supply chain reviews, business integration, business succession in family operating companies, and investments in sales and private equity funds. As a result, the future pipeline, both domestic and international, is building up to the same high level as in FI 2021. In particular, we have a rich pipeline in the U.S. and Europe, stacked with a wide range of sectors and products, including high-tech, industrials, consumers, business services, infrastructure, and debt advisory and restructuring. We intend to expand our revenues by turning this pipeline into concrete deals. Please turn to page 22. Next is Securities Asset Management and the Asset Management Division. At Daiwa Asset Management, AUM in both public and private placement has been steadily increasing, and as of the end of March 2022, AUM totaled 23.6 trillion yen. Since FI 2020, inflows have been on an upward trend due to the expansion of fund wraps, as well as diversification of sales channels and cultivation of flagship funds. Our industry ranking for inflows and outflows have been stagnant for a while, but now we have risen to 10th place in FI 2021. We will continue to design products and expand distribution channels in accordance with customer segments, as well as aim to manage the fund with a focus on investor returns. This month, we will also launch the, the Daiwa Will No. 3 Venture Capital Fund as a publicly offered equity investment trust, which will invest in cutting-edge, high-quality venture companies, mainly in the IT sectors in Japan and the United States. This is a groundbreaking product that offers retail customers the opportunity to invest in blue-chip venture companies at the pre-listing stage, a time when many individual investors normally do not have the opportunity to invest. We will continuously expand our product lineup, including those in alternative investment. Please turn to page 23. In the U.S., inflows into income-type ETFs centered on covered calls surged, and AUM of Global X in the U.S. totaled $43.8 billion, a 5.1-fold increase in two years. In Japan, Global X Japan's AUM and Japan-listed ETFs have expanded 2.1 times year-on-year year due to growing demand for ESG-conscious ETFs, especially amongst financial institution clients. Following the, the global trend, the ETF market is expected to expand in Japan as well. And we will continue to expand edgy products to drive asset building away from savings aiming to increase the AUM. Please turn to page 24. Next is Real Estate Asset Management and the Asset Management Division. AUM and the Real Estate Asset Management business increased to 1.2 trillion yen at the end of FI 2021. And we aim to further stabilize the earning structure by expanding AUM to 1.5 trillion yen by the end of fiscal 2023. Since real estate companies do not normally wish to deal or consult with competitors in the same industry when selling properties, we receive deals and consultations from all directions. In order to close the deals that are brought to us, we will continue to acquire properties by leveraging the strengths of the group, such as speed and flexibility in decision-making, in addition to the warehousing function, utilizing the group's high credit worthiness. Please turn to page 25. Next is on SAMT, an equity method affiliate. Through a CB conversion, we increased our stake in SAMTI from 20% to 31% last September. 
SAMPTI's profit source to date has been the development profit from developing mainly rental condominiums and selling them to REITs and external investors. In the future, however, SAMPTI plans to increase income gains by holding properties for a certain period of time after they are developed. As a result, we expect our equity and earnings of affiliates to increase. Please turn to page 26. Next is Daiwa Energy Infrastructure, the investment division. Daiwa Energy Infrastructure is working to increase profits while emphasizing capital efficiency through its capital recycling model, which consists of accumulating high-quality investments, earning income gains, and increasing value after investment, and earnings capital gains through exits. As part of this effort, in the last fiscal year, we established the Private Core Solar Fund that invests in solar projects already in operation with funds raised from major institutional investors by leveraging Daiwa Securities' financial product structuring and sales capabilities. By securing a stable exit, we can increase the certainty of the prospects for capital gains, and we can also expect the effect of sourcing new deals while being conscious of the sales price to funds. We began investing in solar power plants in fiscal 2012, and while our initial focus was on brownfield projects in the stable operation phase, we have since expanded to greenfield investments in the late development and construction phases, leveraging our accumulated investment experience and expertise. With this, we can differentiate ourselves from players who can only invest in brownfield projects. Daiwa Energy Infrastructure will continue to pursue a capital recycling model in which it will accumulate investment projects, including green projects, after thoroughly managing the risk of each project and sell the assets to funds and other investors after stable operations. Please turn to page 27. Daiwa Energy Infrastructure's investment and loan AUM is approximately 130 billion yen as of the end of last fiscal year and is expected to reach 200 billion yen by the end of fiscal 2023 and 300 billion yen in the medium to long term. While the focus on renewable energy will remain the same, we plan to deploy the know-how and expertise gained from domestic solar business and major overseas markets, and we expect our overseas renewable energy-related assets to increase in the future. In overseas renewable energy investment, we will first focus on Europe, the Americas, and Australia, where the political situation and legal systems are stable, the market is large, and there is a strong track record of development and operation. In Europe, we intend to team up with Aquila Capital, an equity method affiliate, and in the Americas and Australia, we intend to pursue investments in collaboration with our partners. Please turn to page 28. Next is Aquila Capital. Daiwa Energy Infrastructure acquired a 40% interest in Akira Capital in 2020, making it an equity method affiliate. The company is a renewable energy developer and manager with AUM of 12.3 billion euros in 15 countries, mainly in Europe, managing funds from 21 countries and 270 investors. Aquila Capital is strong in early-stage development projects among green projects and has steadily increased its development pipeline, and we expect to increase capital gains from these development projects in the future. They have a very rich track record in Europe, a leading-edge market in the renewable energy field, and will leverage their capability in Europe to grow in the fast-growing Asian market in the future. Please turn to page 29. Our overseas business has been selective and focused on areas where we have strengths and competitive advantage, such as Japan-related business, U.S. equity and bond business, and M&A business in Europe and the United States. 
As a result, the overseas division maintained profitability for the sixth consecutive year in FY 2021 and secured ordinary income of 76 billion yen on a cumulative basis. The Americas will continue to be the driver of overseas revenues and will focus on expanding FICC and U.S. equity business. Europe will strive to improve income structure with the aim of returning to profitability. Currently, as a drastic cost reduction measure, we have started to transfer the trading books for bonds and convertible bonds to Tokyo, and the cost reduction effect will be seen from the second half of this fiscal year. Please turn to page 30. One of the basic policies of our digital strategy is transformation to a data driven business model. This means that business processes and communications will be digitalized and all information will be stored as data. And through such data analysis, research, and utilization, the business model will be transformed to one in which decisions are based on data. Starting this fiscal year, we have established the Data Driven Business Council, which I chair, and we held its first meeting on May the 9th. We intend to strongly promote data utilization and digitalization as a group. Next is our approach to sustainability. Please turn to page 33. This slide explains how human capital supports sustainable corporate management. The government of Japan's new form of capitalism also emphasizes points such as sustainability and human capital, concluding that it is necessary to strengthen investment in people, especially in order to achieve a virtuous cycle of growth and distribution. Daiwa Group's human resource strategy has always been ahead of the industry. In this respect, I think we can say that we are the pioneers of investment in human capital in Japanese companies. We will continue to achieve KPIs related to human capital and realize sustainable corporate value enhancement by staff development and career support, training of professionals who will craft the future, improvement in engagement and productivity, and further evolution of healthy management. Please turn to page 34. In terms of training of professionals, as a digitalization accelerates in the future, it will become possible to actively and smoothly utilize data at each site by developing front IT personnel who not only have advanced IT skills but also have business expertise. Therefore, in April of this year, Daiwa Digital College was established as a framework for all 9,000 employees in Daiwa Securities to acquire these skills. We will create an environment where each and every employee can take on challenging tasks and maximize their own skills and value to become the best partner for our stakeholders. Final page. This is page 39. On May the 1st, Daiwa Securities Group celebrated the 120th anniversary of its founding. We would like to express our gratitude to all our stakeholders, including customers, shareholders, local communities, and business partners who have supported us throughout the years. As part of the commemorative project, the Daiwa Securities Group 120th Anniversary Children's Future Project was launched. This is a project to donate a total of 120 million yen to organizations supporting children who are selected by 109 Daiwa Securities head office and branches nationwide. And also,、uh, we will donate to the Children's Future Support Fund of the Cabinet Office for the purpose of expressing gratitude to local communities and supporting children who would bear our future. We will continue to work toward solving issues related to child poverty. Although financial and capital markets are currently unstable, the world must overcome the pandemic and geopolitical risks and accelerate efforts to achieve the next stage of growth. Under the framework of a new international order and a new way of life. To this end, the Daiwa Securities Group will fulfill its social mission as a capital market player by contributing to the creation of a new mechanism for the circulation of funds 
that will contribute to the development of society and the economy. As we move toward the next 120 years, the entire group will work together to present a new image of the Daiwa Securities Group. This concludes my explanation. Thank you very much for your attention.